Welcome to the Christian Podcast, sponsored by Legit News. So with our exclusive story today, I have our co-host, Ben, to explain us our situation so far. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, we'd really like to thank uh, Legit News for sponsoring this episode of the podcast, and we're really happy to be talking about this uh, ongoing debate. Um, so what's going on is that uh, Pope Francis, the Pope Francis, is uh, issuing mandatory reporting on sexual abuse within the Catholic Church. And uh, this has been going on for a while, um, but now we're finally getting into the nitty gritty and it's starting to get a little more uh, riled up in the Catholic Church because it's an ongoing debate, of course. Um, but I seriously think the Pope is making good progress. Have you heard about the sex misconduct? If so, why would they bring it up until now? Um, yes, I have heard of that. And I think that a lot of the reasons that it takes so long for some of these scandals to come come out into the public is because <clears throat> it, there's a culture of, there's a culture around it and in, in in they try and protect the people in power. So um, the organization oftentimes, or in this case being the Catholic Church, tries to protect itself from a bad publicity or bad name by hiding or covering up things that may not be put them in the best of light. So I think up to this point, maybe a, a culture of embarrassment or a culture of fear of putting the Catholic Church in a bad place or losing money uh, has driven the decisions instead of just doing the right thing. Okay, so Ben, after reviewing those clips, what can you infer about that situation with those that we have interviewed so far? And how can you was it interpret those kind of situations following that you grew up in a Christian household yourself? Well, I'm thinking uh, the people that we interviewed are uh, really spot on. You know, they, they've lived on this planet for a, a lot longer than we have. And uh, they are definitely wiser and um, know more about the situation at hand. Um, I think that uh, Dalton's father is really spot on with his reasoning behind the whole situation on uh, the Catholic Church and I think uh, uh, yeah I really think Dalton's dad is spot on with um, the church wanting to keep it in secrecy because um, you know the church has a lot of power and um, if anything like sexual harassment comes out into the broad public it could potentially threaten the church so I think um, that's a really great point that Dolan's dad has. Have you heard about the sexual misconduct within the Catholic Church? And if so, why wouldn't they bring it up until now? Uh, AKA, why wouldn't the um, Catholic Church like n not, uh, you know, talk about it? Well, I think for a long time they talked about it in small groups, but weren't widely acknowledging it was really happening. And um, a lot of people did know about small pockets of it, but the church leadership really didn't take enough responsibility maybe because it made them look bad. And here you're supposed to be a religion, like we just talked about, all about goodness and taking care of each other. And that was definitely very bad, not taking care of each other and horrible, ruining people's lives. So they didn't want their religion to be associated with that and in some places covered it up. So not good at all. And it sounds like now they're from the Pope on down making some guidelines on how to make sure that it can't be hidden like it was and has to be reported and handled quickly so it doesn't persist. Well, thank you, Mom. Uh, back to you at the studio. Okay, Mom, uh, you grew up uh, Christian, and same with my dad. Uh, what influenced you to be religious, and how has it affected you? Well, first, when I was young, my parents influ influenced me to be religious, but then as I got older, I guess I decided for myself what I believed. Um, and what influenced me was probably everything going on around me in life, and 
things like losing your grandparents and thinking that there must be a heaven and that sort of thing. Okay, interesting. Very cool. And uh, with question number two is... Uh, what influenced you to be religious and how has it affected you? Um, I think my biggest influence for religion was schools I was in. When I was young, <clears throat> my mother um, put me in a school as sort of a daycare because she had to go to work. Uh, she and my, my dad had split up and my mom had to go to work and she needed a place for me to stay because I was old enough to go to school and she put me in a little Christian uh, preschool and as a result of being in a Christian school, Christian preschool, I came to know Jesus, and as a result of that Christian preschool, she and my sister and the rest of our family came to know Jesus, and as a result, we um, learned more and more about God and the Bible and, and things like that, and uh, it influenced how I grew up because I went to private schools from that point on, little Christian schools from here and there, and uh, my faith grew and grew, and that's where I got started. With your prior knowledge with religion, how would it affect you if people that you trust and love were exploited for mutual gain? Well, that sounds bad. <laughs> um, I wouldn't want anyone to be exploited for gain. Um, so if you are a believer in a religion that says, you know, be good to everyone, be the best person that you can, you absolutely would not want to see anyone taken advantage of for their own personal gain. Because in Christian language, or in Christian belief, um, the number one belief is that you should love one another. So you love thy brother as love thyself. Very true. So you shouldn't take advantage of other people would be bad. Yeah, yeah good answer, Mom. And uh, the last question I have for you is... With your prior knowledge, of religion, how would it affect you if people trust and love exploited for mutual gain? Well, one of the things about religion is um, it is a, it is, for me, it's been about trust and about um, having a group or a uh, group of people that you can go to and you have a common understanding of the, of the things that they believe and the things that, 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 the value systems that they have and the things that they would hold sacred and, and honor honored and I think that if the power is abused and I think that if um, if, I, if I had come to find out that people with the held positions of authority within the church or within the religion uh, arena that I was that I, that I believed in um, had taken advantage of that then I believe that I would I believe I would look it would be it would be hard for me to accept and really be hard for me to understand why they would do the things that they did and and also I think it'd be hard for me to really be too forgiving of, of them for you know for the trouble they might be in because um, again I think that being the being within a church is to be within a group that has a common interest and should have a common value system and if they don't have a common value system with what I with what you know the laws are or even what the the rules um, around what how people should act are then it's either not for me or they don't really believe the same, same things I do. Um, so I, I don't think I would look very very um, very well upon that. And you know, I think that things have happened in the churches and all the churches that we're in, and they happen in all churches. So churches like nothing nothing different than anything else. That the people that go there are imperfect um, and they're sinful, and they have every opportunity to fail just like anyone else. And, and their standards are different. But just like anything else, the church is not different in that the leadership of that of that of that uh, organization or the people that are put in a position of authority and power should be held to a standard that's um, greater than than um, than others. And if they abuse that, then it should be treated very seriously. In a critical reception in that Catholic nation, the Pope addressing the unrelenting shadow of scandal and international outrage, speaking of the Vatican's pain and shame, but some calling it too little, too late. ABC's David Wright is with the Pope in Ireland.
Today in Dublin, Pope Francis got an earful about the church's response to the sexual abuse crisis. Some of the signs there in the crowd clearly not meant to welcome him. Above all, Holy Father, we ask that you listen to the victims and survivors. Pope Francis did listen, sitting down behind closed doors for an hour and a half meeting with eight survivors of clerical sexual abuse. We're hopeful that um, he will challenge what he referred to as the high church or the elite within the church who are guilty of corruption and cover-up. He literally said that they were filth in a toilet. Francis acknowledged people have a right to be outraged by the church's response to what he called repulsive crimes against children. And, he said, it remains a source of pain and shame for the Catholic community. Michael O'Brien of Clonmel is 85 years old now. He's been living this horror since he was eight, abused in an orphanage run by Catholic monks. Why did the church allow it happen? Because they didn't care. The Pope's visit here comes just weeks after a damning Pennsylvania grand jury report implicated 300 priests in allegedly abusing more than a thousand victims going back decades, while dozens of bishops allegedly turned a blind eye. That's why Pope Francis is under such pressure now. Washington, D.C. Cardinal Donald Wuerl may well be the next major church figure to resign because of this scandal. That Pennsylvania grand jury report was harshly critical of him. In his defense, Wuerl says he's always acted to diligently protect children. Wuerl was due to be a keynote speaker here in Dublin, but he pulled out at the last moment.